I've been putting off that new Ari Aster movie, Bo is Afraid, because it looks too much like a bad acid trip. And uh yeah, I don't I don't know why I am putting it off so much. I think it's also the length. I know it's quite a commitment in terms of the uh the length of the movie and I haven't had an opportunity to watch that long a movie in a little while, but I'll get around to it eventually. And I recall coming across some, uh, was it a YouTube video or an article saying that at some Q and a, I think for that movie, Bill was afraid Ari Aster was, uh, on mushrooms or LSD with Nathan Fielder backstage, which checks out, right? You think of both of their work, they seem like trippy, trippy geezers. And, um, you know, as a man who's uh, sampled a few different um, confectionaries over the years, I uh, can definitely, you get like a, um, I wouldn't call it a flashback, but there's a sense of awareness or connection when you listen to something or read something or watch something. And you just get like a sense memory almost of like, oh yeah, I can kind of pick up on the vibe of what the uh, the creator was under the influence of when they were um, putting this together on their side of the fence. Because yeah, there, there is like a just maybe a uh, a subtle lingering focus on certain things that you would otherwise ignore. And it begs the question, what's the best drug to take if you want to create cool art? And um, initially when approaching this question, I was going to discount weed and alcohol because for me, with any artist worth their salt, that's kind of the walking around. That's the walking around money that you just need to carry. Well, that most fucking people have on them, at least when they're starting out. It makes sense as people get older and they kind of need to sober up or give up the weed, man. But at least initially with uh, most artists, they fuck around drinking and getting high. And um, yeah, that's kind of so universal. It's hard to really um, pinpoint it that much. Although I do find it interesting when you find out about like uh, artists who are typically known for other drugs and then you find out that they had like a brutal, um, brutal drinking problems. Like one that springs to two jam bands actually spring to mind is like Jerry Garcia. And actually think, I think it was when he was trying to kick heroin, he became like a brutal alcoholic for a while. So I think Jerry was into the booze for a while and he was in, in involved in heroin. So you think Grateful Dead, like hippies, LSD, weed, but kind of like pure and free and clean. Well, the dirty hippies, I guess. But you know what I mean? Not, not kind of like uh, fucking grungy heroin and like drinking too much. But yeah, that got, that got involved at a certain point. And then uh, the guy from Fish, I believe, Phil? I don't fucking know. Another jam band. Never been a Fish fan. Never been a Grateful Dead fan, really, either. But anyway, no, he had a brutal drinking problem. And that's funny for me, like, thinking that all the fucking trippers in the audience and this guy's, like, stumbling around. Because the guy from Fish, he's looked like uh, 45 years old since he was 22. One of those guys where... At 22 years old, he looked 45. And then because he sobered up a few years ago, now he's like 60. He still looks 45. So he's one of those guys who's been 45 for 45 years. <laughs> Just in like a weird look up upon his face. But anyway, he looked like a, um, he looked like, uh, you can kind of imagine him drunk as like a, a dad's drunk at the Hard Rock Cafe where he's like on, on the second last night of a family vacation. He's like throws down a few too many whiskeys, gets a stink eye from his wife, his cunty wife. He's just trying to let his hair down because he's sick of all the shopping and amusement parks that he's had to do. And there's like a 
there's a two star <laughs> blues band on at the Hard Rock Cafe. He's like, yeah, play some Hendrix, man. Um. Anyway, that's what the guy from Fish looks like. Side note. I saw something terrifying on Reddit the other day. Fish did a show in Chicago. And uh, it's one of those things where it's like just a short snippet of a video of this guy was at some big stadium in Chicago. He was outside the venue, you know, one of those like uh, where they have the bars and stuff like that and the stairs and elevators where you get up and then you enter the concourse. Or is it the concourse? Whatever it is, the big concrete area outside of concert venues or stadiums. This guy was running around there and the, uh, around all these people who were grabbing a beer or going to the bathroom and he was bleeding from um, both eyes. He'd apparently gouged out both of his eyeballs while watching fish because he was completely tripping his balls off and uh, yeah, had, had freaked out and gouged his eyeballs out. And then he was like just running scared, scream. I'll never forget the yelps and screams that he was letting out as he was like literally running straight into walls and stuff in this blind panic, this big fucking bulky looked to be in his thirties, just this like tech bro looking dude who'd uh, lost both of his eyes evidently at the fish concert, which is fucking terrifying. So anyway, let's, let's discount weed and booze from this little competition here. So it comes down to psychedelics, heroin, uh, cocaine. And I think heroin has to take the crown, right? Like just in terms of the depth of emotion and the kind of, um, although I guess you could say that with heroin art, it's all kind of a bit samey, like the, uh, just the sense of kind of like, uh, everything's cool. You know, those bands, um, Spaceman three and, uh, spiritualized. And I guess they're like so similar to the Velvet Underground. I guess Nirvana took heroin in a slightly different direction. Um, but uh, yeah, those bands where it's like, uh, all I want to do is have a little holiday. The start of that uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, We Are Floating in Space album by Spiritualized. That album should come with like a uh, warning. Will will make you want to take heroin warning label like Paxa smokes tell you that pregnant pregnant ladies shouldn't be fagging it up. Um, so maybe that's the issue with heroin, right? Is that it's too similar. Cocaine. What's been made, like Scorsese went went on a bit of a run there, made some good fucking movies. Goodfellas feels like it was made on cocaine, but in a good way. Um, the rapid frenetic energy of the whole thing. It does have the quality of someone telling you an enthralling story uh, at a bar after a couple bumps. Hmm. Yeah. And then psychedelics and stuff like that. Then you start getting into the realm of uh, what are those kind of like really fucking trippy, uh, you know, those oh, Jesus Christ, what are they called? Where it's like M- Maleka or something. Malek. That movie, fuck. This is not. This is not helping. Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds checked one of them on one of his recent. Who built the moon? Holy Mountain. That's it. Holy Mountain movie. Who the fuck was that guy? Movie. Alejandro. Jodorowsky, who is from Chile. Uh, yeah, he made a bunch of those fucking strange, trippy movies. So, yeah, I don't know. Fucking hell. This is a tough one. Yeah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here and say cocaine because I feel like uh, with psychedelic no it's got to be all the fucking cool Beatles stuff and i think i'm gonna go with lsd is the is the drug that helps create the best art however i will add add a caveat if someone is coked up like tarantino or scorsese 
and they can have the wherewithal to actually write and put something together whilst being on Coke, as opposed to getting distracted and their attention disintegrating into tons of different directions, then maybe that might be the winner. Heroin's too samey. Coke is too uh, disjointed and leads nowhere. So I think uh, by default, LSD is winning this one. So it leads me back to the beginning. I need to nut up and fucking have a little tabby and then watch uh, Bo is Afraid. We're going to be a big man. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Have I gotten this completely wrong? Let me know, please. All right. Catch you on the next one. Bye.